Hey everyone, happy new year. I hope you're having a good day so far. In today's video, I'm gonna show you everything that I eat in a day as a vegan when I just wanna get my energy back. After December, I feel like my energy kind of plummets because it's such a busy time. I'm sure you guys can relate to this. It's such a busy time and I just feel like the last thing I do is take care of myself. Like I have such a long to-do list and my mental and physical well-being tends to be more towards the bottom of the to-do list and when I get to it, I'm sort of like, eh, I'll do it tomorrow and then I never do it tomorrow and you know, like after a while that makes you feel run down and just not like yourself and so I've been feeling that way I'm sure a lot of you guys are feeling like that so I'm gonna show you the very practical and normal things I do to just feel my best thank you to Osea for teaming up with me on this video and let's go ahead and get started with breakfast if you're looking for an easy way to eat healthy, one of my favorite kind of go-to cheat sheets is Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen. I think it is just a really simple way to make sure that I'm covering all of my bases. So I had that in mind when I made all of my meals on this day. And for breakfast, I went with my new favorite combo, which is toast with hummus and sauerkraut, which might sound really strange. I saw this on Alexandra's channel from 5 Sec Health. I tried it and I've been addicted ever since. It's basically a thick, delicious, creamy layer of store-bought hummus with some cool, crunchy, sour, salty sauerkraut on top, and then I had that with some berries. This breakfast had lots of fiber, actually 20 grams of protein, which might surprise some of you, but lots of protein, probiotics, lots of vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin C, some iron, all good stuff, and it made me feel really good. So I had that with a glass of water. I finished with my vegan multivitamin that I take every day, and that was my breakfast. Creating resolutions and building new good habits doesn't have to be a punitive thing. You don't have to make these changes because you were bad or because you didn't do something well. I like to focus on how I wanna feel. So it's not necessarily what I want to get or what I want to achieve, but how do I wanna feel in 2022? You know, like what, when you think about your career goals or your relationship goals or, you know, your fitness goals, how will achieving those goals make you feel? And when I think of it like that, I feel a lot more motivated to make the change and then you start to take steps in that direction you start to see progress and that's when you really get that ball rolling and you gain that momentum and I feel like that's when I really make long lasting changes that really serve me I think it's just really important to make sure that as you're reflecting check in and see how you're talking to yourself how you're feeling when you're making these resolutions and if you're really doing it from a place of true self-love and you're being compassionate to yourself I heard the term on TikTok. it was compassionate self-inquiry ask yourself questions when you're thinking about behaviors and patterns and you're reflecting on 2021, do it with compassion. And I do think that veganism is an extension of compassion and as a whole, compassion is a philosophy that I try to apply to all areas of my life. So I just wanted to say that as a little reminder because it's something that I'm reminding myself of. I keep catching myself being very critical and I think it's a good thing to just keep that in the back of your mind. I used to make these resolutions to get back into fitness and I would just go all in. I would dive in head first, do a really challenging workout and it felt good day of because I would feel really accomplished and proud of myself, but then I would get really sore and maybe I wouldn't want to work out the next day or the day after that and I just found that it was easy to kind of fall off the bandwagon that way. So instead I like to start slow, be really practical, and my new goal is just to get some sort of movement and fresh air every day and be consistent about that. So I'll do a 10 minute workout on YouTube and go for a walk or stretch afterwards and build from there. All right, I'm back from my walk now and I'm hungry. So I'm gonna heat up lunch and have lunch and then I'm gonna take a shower and really do like a full refreshing nice shower. But last night we had a bunch of family members over for a Christmas Eve dinner and I made Brussels sprouts with cranberries. I just roasted with salt and pepper and then I threw in dried cranberries at the end. And then we also have some roasted carrots and some vegan Norwegian meatballs. I just made meatballs using the impossible meat and I mixed it with onions, some breadcrumbs, a little salt and pepper, and then a vegan steak seasoning. I mix that all together. I am gonna be sharing the recipe in January, but I need to test it a couple more times to get the measurements and the quantities and the cook times and all of that perfect before I share it. So I really like the flavor. Everyone in my family was really excited. We had a lot of Norwegians here last night and they were like, wow, this tastes like meatballs, but Obviously there's no meat in them, so that was really cool. My family and I, we all had the same lunch. We heated up leftovers and we ate it while watching more Hallmark movies, even though Christmas is over. They're just, they've been on basically all day, every day. And so after lunch, I had one of these pieces of gingerbread cake. This is the fluffy vegan gingerbread cake recipe on my channel. And it has vegan cream cheese frosting and crushed up ginger snap cookies on top.
after lunch, I went into the kitchen and I pulled out some sugar, some cocoa powder, cacao powder, and some avocado oil. And I made a hot chocolate sugar scrub. I've been making this for years and it's a really cool way to make an exfoliating body scrub that feels so good. I haven't really done any kind of self-care pampering stuff in a while. And so putting this on my skin really helps to slough off that dry top layer. And then I will shave and moisturize when I get out of the shower and I seriously just feel like a new human. It's such a good feeling. And one of my favorite all natural vegan cruelty free brands is Osea and they just came out with this new body butter. It is an Andaria Algae body butter and this is very, very rich very moisturizing but it's not heavy it doesn't like sit on top of my skin it really soaks in and it just my skin is so soft I keep doing this which is probably awkward to be doing I like to kind of just rub it between my hands like this and then I will literally put it everywhere I really focus it on like my elbows my knees my hands my hands get super super red I think everybody's do in the cold but on top of it in California I don't have a dishwasher so I do all my dishes by hand and I rarely wear gloves <laughs> as much as I'm supposed to so I tend to just have really dry irritated skin on my hands but I just love how healthy and nourished my skin looks after I put this lotion on I also like to rub it around my cuticles I feel like that just makes my manicure look nicer it kind of makes my nails look shiny and it makes the skin around my nails look really neat and fresh and clean I feel just super smooth and glowy and healthy my skin I've not really been taking good care of my skin and I feel like you can't even tell I feel like it just looks so much better and just nourished and glowy and healthy and all the things that we want our skin to look like so I will put a link for you to check out this new body butter in the description box below and you can get 10% off when you use that link so definitely check that out and now I'm gonna go hang out with my family for a little while for tonight I'm gonna make one of my favorite healthy recipes on the blog this is a dinner that makes me feel so good and my mom and my sister have never tried it so I'm really excited for them to try it because I think my mom especially is gonna love it one of the reasons that Dr. Greger's checklist is so helpful is because it really reminds me to count colors, not calories. Or another way of saying that is to focus on nutrition and what I am adding to my plate rather than having these really small portions. Because especially when I was making New Year's resolutions and trying to eat healthy and be clean, that in my mind somehow meant smaller portions. And especially with snacks, I would have these tiny little snacks and I couldn't figure out why I was starving at the end of the day. So now I like to eat really hearty, well-balanced snacks that almost are like small meals and it just makes me feel so good. All right, so I've just made myself a cup of tea. This is hibiscus tea. There's no caffeine in here. And I'll show you, it's actually these tea crystals that you can dissolve in hot or cold water. So if you have a like to go water bottle with you that you like to carry around, you can have some of these packets with you as well. And you can have a little hibiscus tea as a really nice treat. And so I just made myself a cup of this. It's a little too hot to drink, but I'm gonna have that while I'm cooking dinner. Tonight for dinner, I'm gonna be making my rice and lentil nourish bowls, and I called it nourish bowls and not grain bowls because this meal seriously makes me feel so good, especially when I've just been like, you know, eating kind of junk food or just sort of random lazy meals. This is one that I go to time and time again because it's really hearty and satisfying, but it's, it's that kind of meal that just makes me feel full in a good way, and I feel like I'm just getting all of my, I'm checking all the nutritional boxes. Starts with some rice. and then I add lentils. Today I'm gonna to do chickpeas just cause that's what we have on hand. But anytime you have a whole grain and a legume, you're creating a complete protein, which is awesome. You get all of the essential amino acids that you need from that combination, so that's really great. And we're also getting fiber, complex carbs, loads of minerals there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add some roasted sweet potatoes. And if you don't like sweet potatoes, I highly recommend cooking them this way because this recipe really plays off the sweetness. So some people think that the sweetness of sweet potatoes is just like, it's weird, it's off-putting, but I season these potatoes with really savory spices. So it creates this kind of like salty, sweet, savory, sweet kind of thing that is really good. It gets crispy and salty and buttery on the outside even though we're not using butter. And then we're gonna do some kale, which as you guys know, is a really great leafy green. It's a cruciferous vegetable, so Dr. Greger would be super pleased to see yet another cruciferous vegetable in my day. And it's just, you know, lots of vitamins, lots of fiber, antioxidants, all the good stuff. I add the walnuts because the walnuts not only add 
extra nutrients, omegas, fiber, healthy fat, all that stuff, but also it adds some crunch. And I feel like you want your meals to be as satisfying and delicious as possible, especially when they're healthy, because if you're eating healthy and you're bored, you're still gonna end up craving a bunch of other stuff. But if you eat healthy foods that are just delicious and craveable, it makes it so much easier to eat nourishing foods more often. That's like how you make a healthy diet sustainable in my opinion. So the walnuts add texture, they add some crunch, same thing with the raisins, they add a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of chewiness, you know, more texture, more contrast, and the whole thing gets topped with this creamy one minute sauce, literally one minute. It takes one minute to make, and I have two different versions. I have a cashew base and a tahini base, so you can have a nut free option if you like. I love both, I make both all the time, just kind of depending on what I have on hand, whatever, um, you know, sounds good to me that day. Today we're gonna do the tahini base, because that's what my mom has, so really great luscious sauce that I'm just gonna put over everything very generously. And then I like to serve this with lots of lemon or lime wedges on the side. It's so good and I think my family's gonna love it. I think that learning about plant-based nutrition is one of the things that's really helped me to enjoy eating healthy. Before, I used to just force myself to eat broccoli because it was healthy, but when I actually learned why broccoli is healthy and all of the things that makes broccoli good for my body, it makes me look at my plate in a different way. So when they say count colors, not calories, what that means to me is just really focus on what the food is doing for your body. I think when you think of calories, it's a very reductionist way of thinking about food and nutrition. When I'm eating broccoli, I'm not thinking, oh, I have to eat broccoli because it's healthy. I've learned why broccoli is healthy, and now I know like, oh, I'm getting all of these anti-carcinogenic properties, and I'm getting fiber and protein and vitamin K, and oh, like oh, all of these amazing things, you know? It really makes it fun to eat healthy, and so I do try to build a plate that is colorful and very plant-focused, and with each one, I think about how lucky I am to be able to eat in this way and like truly nourish my body in a way that feels good. It really changes everything when you kind of shift your mindset in that way. And the last thing that I like to focus on when I'm trying to really get my energy levels back up and just feel like myself again is to focus on sleep, which if you're rolling your eyes, that means you're very much like me. Whenever I hear people talking about getting enough sleep or just drinking enough water, I, you, you can't help but roll your eyes because it just sounds so obvious, but I notice a huge difference when it comes to digestion, bloating, indigestion, stomach aches, like a lot of that has to do with stress and with lack of sleep for me personally. When I sleep well, I feel like my stress levels go down anyway. So focusing on sleep is something that I personally struggle with. I'm one of the, I think maybe few people who really hate to sleep. I know a lot of people love to sleep. I'm one of those people where I just feel like I'd rather do anything else. So it is a bit of a struggle for me to get a proper night's sleep. So I'm prioritizing it now. I'm not criticizing myself, remember earlier? It's not about being self-critical. It's just finding ways where you can make a little tweak and do something that's really gonna be healthy and beneficial to your life and make you feel your best. And so for me, it's like, okay, I know that I could get more sleep, I could prioritize that. And so moving forward, that is my goal. I'm gonna just be very aware of giving myself enough time to actually settle in, going to bed. The trick for me is going to bed before I'm exhausted. Sometimes I'll stay up right until I'm exhausted and I'm like too tired to wash my face and I just crash and I wake up feeling groggy. But if I wash my face, I settle into bed, I give myself a little time to unwind and then I fall asleep before I'm exhausted, it makes all the difference in the world. So. That is the plan for tonight, but I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, comment below, and let me know what the best thing that you ate today was, because I think it's really fun to share meal ideas here. And if you want to check out that Osea amazing body butter, their brand new body butter, then click the link in the description box below. I really think you'll love it, and you'll save 10% when you do. I hope you have a really great day, and happy new year, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye.